A very good evening ladies and gentlemen and I am Ram Shankar here to give a promotional video of my lecture The Duality of Particle and Why I Like Sleeping Well, to start understanding the duality of particles we need to start at the two basic concepts of what exactly is the duality all about Now, in the beginning people thought light was a wave well, that's what at least Young said and that's what Young proved conclusively in his Young's double set experiment. Now, what Young did was, he placed a source of light and um, he split the screen into two things. And when the waves emanated from the source 1 and source 2, what happened was, he found these splinters. Now, what these splinters denote is that the, the region where it's uh, light shows that uh, there was constructive interference and where there was no fringes or where it was dark, there was destructive interference. But let's just go to see a small animation for that. Now, if you look at this animation, you can clearly see that the waves from the two sources emanate and at one particular part, you can see they, ins they interfere constructively and where there is no interference, they interfere destructively. And that is what showed these fringes. So, the conclusion that they reached was two beams of light interfered and interference was clearly a wave property because we know that sounds interfere and sound is conclusively a wave. So, they came to the conclusion that light is perfectly a wave. But this held on for quite some time. And clearly, this explained quite a lot of phenomena like refraction, diffraction, and um, uh, polarization, and all this perfectly founded well. But then, as uh, science progressed, they interfered a bump, and that bump was the photoelectric effect. Well, small animation for that too. Well, in the photoelectric effect, the photon, a light fell on the photocathode and electrons were released. Now note that uh, only for a certain uh, wavelength for sodium which is 400 nanometer, electrons were released. Now by increasing the intensity, more electrons came out. And when we shifted the wavelength to a higher wavelength, no electrons came out. And by increasing the intensity as you see right now, no electrons came out. See, 100% intensity but no electrons. Well, this was kind of baffling because if Yes. But this is kind of baffling because uh, the, the wave property of light could not explain the photoelectric effect. Clearly, as to why for certain wavelengths electrons were pumped out and for certain wavelengths electrons did not come out was clearly a problem. And then came Einstein. Now we see Einstein explained the photoelectric effect assuming that light is a particle. And this earned him the Nobel Prize and not the theory of relativity. Because clearly, to have the urge to say that light is a particle, when conclusively it was proved time again with wave, clearly deserved it. So what was his proposition? He said, H nu, where H stands for Planck constant, is equal to kinetic energy of injected electrons plus the word function. Now, let's just dwell a bit more into the word function. Well, the verb function is nothing but the energy required to make a bound electron from the atom to, and make it a free electron, as the energy diagram says. And H nu is nothing but the energy of the incident photon. Incident photon. As, as you can see, if this, if this energy of the incident photon was less than the birth energy, then no free electrons would come out. And, and now next comes the question: What would happen if I have three photons of energy phi by two, phi by two, phi by two? Would I still get a free electron? Well, if light had been assumed to be a wave, you would, because in reality they would add up, as in. 5 by 2, 5 by 2, plus 5 by 2 which is still greater than 5 and obviously you would have the uh, electron to be ejected out but that clearly didn't happen because increasing the number of photons 
equal to increasing the intensity and as we saw in the animation, no free electrons had come out. What happened was particles, we assume the light is a particle and particles do not interfere. If you have two particles A and B, they clearly do not interfere with each other. So, if you have three photons of energy phi by 2, phi by 2, phi by 2, you would not get the free electron. And this was given by the Compton scattering experiment, which due to lack of time I will be not able to explain it now. And in Compton scattering experiment, it clearly showed light transferred its momentum from light which hit an incident electron, transferred its momentum and scattered the longer wavelength. Now clearly, momentum is the particle nature. And thus, we now conclusively prove that light is a particle. And Einstein gave this famous equation, P is equal to H over lambda. Which means, that which has a wavelength, which is light, now has a momentum. This is the wave nature and this is the particle nature. That which has a moment, that which has a wavelength now has a momentum and as you can see momentum is the particle nature, light is conclusively a particle. So, here we have, we started off with light as a wave and we proved light as a particle. Sadly the story doesn't end here and as we enter the world of quantum mechanics, we will see more bizarre things. We can now prove matter which was a particle would be a wave and what we inherently thought was a wave is a particle. I'll be glad to see you then in my next lecture. Thank you. This is Ram Shankar standing off.